happening and welcome to another one of MPPA's well, uh, Master Your Gear series. Um, this series we're working with Canon and uh, Tony Kurzek is going to be presenting to you the Canon workflow for photojournalists. We're going to be exploring voice tagging, the IPTC, image transfer, ESO utility, and photo mechanic live ingest and more. Now, the whole nature of the series is like, why read the manual when we can do it for you? And if you're like me, a lot of other photojournalists, I rarely read the manual until I actually need something and I can't figure it out. And this Master Your Gear series is a type where it helps you go past that. And Tony is one of our great Canon Pro reps who has a great depth of experience in all aspects of this. He has been uh, with uh, both a photojournalist and has been working as a, a Canon senior market rep for the last few years, about almost a couple of decades now. But he started his career as a photojournalist, still a photojournalist uh, in the New York metropolitan area. He was a staff photographer at the Star Ledger in New York, New York, New Jersey for 19 years, where he was instrumental in the paper's conversion from film digital in the late, late 1990s and later with using Canon's DSLR cameras. Tony was awarded Photographer of the Year three times by the New Jersey Press Photographers Association and was National Press Photographer Association Northern Short Course Photographer for the year of the year in 2006 and also a member of the Star Ledger team awarded the 2005 Pulitzer Prize for Breaking News. Tony joined Canon in 2015 as Pro Market Rep for the Northeast Region. Currently, he is primarily provides support for the photojournalism community, including major net national agency like Getty Images, Thomas, uh, Thomas Reuters, European Press Agency, both large and small newspapers, and freelance photojournalists. He is part of Canon's professional services staff that regularly attends major events like the Super Bowl, US Open, the Olympics, national political events. Uh, he is an expert in wired and wireless networking of cam uh, Canon cameras, Canon, Canon robotics, and remote cam cameras. So please, help me welcome Tony and uh, we'll also be open to uh, uh, questions anytime throughout his presentation so if you have a question put them into the chat or the Q&A and we'll uh, and, and we have Singray Schuler, our, our master uh, magician in the back who will answer put the questions out there for Tony so thank you again and uh, kick it off Tony tell us all we can do uh, thank you very much, Akili, and uh, uh, thank you for uh, to Stingray also for, for helping out. And thank you uh, to the NPPA, and thank you everyone for, for joining us tonight. Um, so as Akili mentioned, tonight we're going to talk about workflow um, from camera to computer to uh, the server. Um, I'm going to show a PowerPoint presentation with a lot of information in it. Um, please use the, the chat or the Q&A to put in any questions you might have. Stingray is going to be monitoring that, uh, and he'll be interrupting me with, with your questions as we go along. So please uh, don't be afraid to ask questions. I'm going to try and go through the, the PowerPoint fairly quickly um, so that we have some time in the end for questions, because um, I'm anticipating that, that you might have uh, quite a few by the time I'm done here. So I am going to um start my powerpoint here uh, bear with me for one minute please okay okay just give me a recognition that you guys can see my uh screen here and yep looking good okay thank you stingray all right so um Canon workflow. So obviously we're going to talk specifically about um, Canon cameras. Um, I'm going to talk about the new cameras. There's still a lot of folks using some of the older gear. So I've incorporated some of that into this as well. Um, so without any further ado, I'm going to just get started. Um, just, you know, real briefly, just to start, you know, what is a workflow? Um, a series of actions performed as a standard practice to produce a required and repeatable end result. And so I, I wanted to throw this in here because this sort of becomes a mindset. And we're going to talk about a couple of different kinds of practices. But if you keep in mind that that 
you know, the end result is what's important and that needs to be the same. So we're going to be changing around how we do things in the middle. Um, but the way this workflow is set up that I'm going to show you, the end result is essentially always the same. Um, repeatability, consistency, uh, practice, all of these things are really important when it comes to this. So basic requirements, what, what do we need as, as minimums to make a photojournalist workflow happen? We need to capture the images. We need to be able to edit and select them. We need to be able to add caption and other metadata when necessary. And obviously we need to deliver them however, however that is uh, most of the time now through, through FTP. So to start out talking specifically about the, the Canon cameras, I wanna talk about um, IPTC data embedding. So uh, compatible models are listed on the right. These are the Canon cameras that you can embed IPTC data into so that when you record an image, whether it's raw or JPEG, if you have that add IPTC information turned on, as you see in the menu there, that caption data will be added to every single image. This becomes important when we're talking about FTP or transmitting straight out of the camera, um, where you don't have time to go into a program like Photo Mechanic and add specific caption data. Um, you can have data embedded right in the camera. Okay, so how do we add this IPTC data? Right now, this is done through our EOS utility program, and I'm going to be talking a lot about EOS utility and some of the functions that you can do with this program with our cameras. Uh, this is something that you should have installed on your laptop uh, pretty much at all times, um, because if, for example, your card reader goes down, you have no other way to get images into the computer, EOS utility will allow you to connect the camera with USB and get the images off the card. So important to have for that reason alone. But with EOS utility and a IPTC compatible camera, we can go into camera settings, register IPTC information, type in what we need in the different fields, and then apply that to the camera. And then that IPTC data will go with every single image. So the other nice thing about the way EOS utility works is it is XMP file compatible. So if you're used to photo mechanic, if you're used to writing captions in photo mechanic, you can just go into the photo mechanic IPTC dialog, save out the XMP metadata, and then load that into EOS utility and quickly apply that to the camera. So uh, that's a huge help because most of us really are used to photo mechanic and, and where all those fields are um, and trying to look for them in a, in a program that you're unfamiliar with can, can, can take a lot of time. So this is a huge help. So <clears throat> when it comes to being able to get to our images quickly, the, 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 the best way to do this is to use the, the protect image or the tag image function in the Canon cameras. So um, starting with the, the 1D series, the 1DX, 1DX2, 1DX3, that's done through this uh, uh, protect record image button on the back of the camera. So as you're in the playback mode, you can scroll through when you get to an image that you know you want to select as a favorite or select as one that's going to get sent to the FTP server later on, you can press that protect or tag button. Um, you'll get this little icon that shows up on the rear screen to show you that image is protected. And then when you bring those images into photo mechanic, if you sort by tagged the way the, uh, the, the menu shows here, then all of the images that are tagged will come up at the top of the frame you'll be able to see them right away and have them separate from everything else where you don't have to scroll through everything and get to the tagged images. So that's, that's, really, that's really cool. So the other thing that you can do with the 1DX, 1DX2, 1DX3 is record voice memos. So it's the same button as the protect button, but in order to uh, record a memo, instead of just pressing it, you press and hold and you'll get this window that comes up that allows you 30 seconds to basically record 
a memo into the, the little microphone in the back of the camera here. Uh, so this is really, really popular for sports photographers, you know, right after, you know, an important play, they'll go into the image and basically say, you know, what happened, the who, what, where, and then protect that image. And they'll now have the image protected and have that voice tag go along with it. Um, you get 30 seconds per clip. If you need more than 30 seconds, you can record multiple 30 second clips that will get associated with that specific file. And again, when you record a voice tag, you'll see this icon show up um, that that says there is a, a wave file attached to that image. Hey, Tony, there's a question. Yes. Uh, asking, is there a way to be able to voice tag after blocking the image? They've only noticed they can do it before. They correct. Take the photo. Yeah, that 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 is absolutely correct. So one of the functions of, of protecting or tagging the image um, is to prevent that image not only from being deleted, but prevent that image from otherwise being changed on the disk. So uh, when an image is protected, it, it's the same as if you were to protect it um, with the Finder or with Windows Explorer. Um, that, Im that, that file cannot be changed until that protected status changes. So the long and the short of it is you have to record the voice memo first, and then after that voice memo is recorded, you can protect the image. Um, so yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, that is a very good point that uh, you can only record a voice memo with an unprotected image. Okay, so uh, on the R5, it doesn't have that same protect sound record button, but it does have a rate button. And on the R5, you can program that rate button to function the same as the protect record button on the 1D series. So um, these menu items here show you how that happens. Um, you select the, the rate button function, and then you set it for this protect hold record memo. So the R5 can do uh, voice tag files. Uh, the R6, despite the fact that that camera is, is very similar to the R5, the R6 um, only has protect status. So you can, assign protect to the rate button, but you cannot do voice memo recording. That's an R5 feature. Um, any camera that Canon makes that has the blue rate button on the back of it, so the 5D Mark III, the 7D Mark II, um, there's a few others. Any of them with that rate button can have that rate button assigned to protect. So the 5D Mark IV, out of the box does not come with a voice tagging feature, but for a $99 upgrade, and not, a lot of people don't know this, but you can send your 5D Mark IV into Canon, and for $99, they will add that uh, voice tagging upgrade feature to the 5D4. So again, that makes the rate button function the same way as the uh, protect record button in the 1D series, and you then get this new menu item after the upgrade that allows you to protect and, and record. Just a side note, um, if you're a video person and you have a 5D4 that has the Canon log upgrade, um, it's a one or the other thing. You either have the log upgrade or you have the protect upgrade, um, but not both. So um, you need to dedicate an individual uh, body for that. Um, the other thing is since the 5D4 does not have a microphone on the back of the camera, um, the camera on the, the microphone on the front of the camera, the, the built in video microphone is what's used to record the sound. So the EOS R. Um, if you have an EOS R, there's a couple of ways you can protect, but there's a really fast way to protect on the EOS R, and that's using the multifunction bar. Um, and, you know, admittedly, folks sort of have a love hate relationship with this multifunction bar and, and, you know, some people use it, some people just don't use it at all. Um, this is a function that you can set for that multifunction bar that operates only in the playback mode. 
So the multifunction bar, if you swipe your finger across it and while you're shooting, it's not going to do anything. But if you program as it shows here, just for the playback mode, and then set either a left or a right tap as protect, when you're in the playback mode and you're scrolling through your images, you can just quickly tap on that multifunction bar, whichever way you program right or left, um, and that will change the protect status of an image. So uh, I found with the EOS R that, that this function actually helps out a lot. So um, Stingray, this one is, is just for you. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so for cameras that don't have a protect or don't have a rate button, if the camera has a Q button on the back of it, if you press the Q button, it will bring up a menu in this playback mode that has the protect function uh, available in there. There's also on all Canon cameras, the protect images option in the blue playback menu um, that allows you to basically go into an alternate protect playback mode that lets you scroll through and then select the ones you want to protect so not as quick as doing it with the other cameras but you can do it with with any and all canon cameras so i'm going to go through a couple of different workflow scenarios and talk about a way to do it um, as we all know there are many different ways to do many different things uh, I'm going to show you four different cases and a way to handle a workflow in, in these four specific cases. So, um, you know, if something I'm talking about doesn't jive with your workflow, I'm going to leave time at the end open. We can talk about maybe substituting some things or changing some of the things I talked about. So please, um, you know, feel free to interject with that. So, um, I kind of call this the, the 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 armchair workflow. This is this is when you've got plenty of time to get your images in. You know, you shot a feature story; it's not due for a couple of days or a week or whatever, uh, and you know you can sit down in your living room in a lazy boy and just and just work on the photos. So you're hooking up a card reader to the camera to, to the computer. You're you're using Photo Mechanic ingest function to copy those images in, and so. In Photo Mechanic, one of the options with the ingest function is to also apply IPTC caption data. So if you're not using this function with the Photo Mechanic ingest, if you're the kind of person that's just going into the Finder or going into Windows Explorer and sort of dragging your images off the card to a folder, um, it may seem like this might be a longer way of doing it, but once you have it set up the way you want, it actually goes a lot faster and is a lot easier. So with the ingest function in Photo Mechanic, you can set up a base folder where everything goes, and then you can have it automatically add the date of the, uh, the ingest. So, you know, today's date would automatically be created in that subfolder. And then you can have it automatically create a folder for the assignment. So if you want to put the story slug or, or assignment number or whatever you want, Photo Mechanic will also do that automatically in the ingest process. And then we'll also automatically apply a batch caption. So I talked about embedding caption data in the camera, which is really important. But if you do this with the ingest function in Photo Mechanic, having that data in the caption already is not going to change ever, anything unless you tell Photo Mechanic to change those, those specific fields. So when it comes to embedding the data into the camera, I tell people that at the very least, if you have that IPTC capability in your camera, at the very least, you should have the fields in the IPTC areas that never change. So your name, the credit for the organization that you work for, um, whatever copyright information that is always in there. So those things that that regardless of of when the assignment is done or where it is or or when it is, that data never changes. So that basic data should always be loaded into the camera and the IPTC turned on. So at the very least, that data is there. When you do the photo mechanic ingest, you can have photo mechanic either overwrite that with new data 
or if you leave those those fields blank and unchecked there's there's check marks uh, next to each one of these fields if you leave the check mark off photo mechanic will leave that field as is so it will carry over the data that's in the camera so that's up to you how you'd want to set that up um, but i really strongly recommend that you have that basic data that never changes loaded into the camera at all times so you do your ingest it copies everything to the folder that you want if you want you can rename the photos you can do a whole bunch of other stuff with variables i won't get into variables but if you don't know variables in photo mechanic it's something you should look into there's a ton of tutorial tutorials on youtube talking about variables and how to use them they're very 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 easy and simple and efficient to use um, there's also the photo mechanic code replacement which i won't really get into but if you want to just make a note to google photo mechanic code replacement if you shoot a lot of sports that's something you should be doing as well so goes into photo mechanic then we go into photoshop or lightroom we're going to do our cropping we're going to do our toning we're going to do whatever we want to make the images look the way we want um, we can either add detailed caption data in the file info of photoshop or we can save the image out as a jpeg and then you know go back into that save as folder with photo mechanic and add additional specific caption data either way you want to do that that's that's up to you photographers tend to do it both ways and and like the way they do it and either one is fine and then so when those images are saved out they get uh they get delivered uh usually via ftp or whatever you use to deliver to uh to your customer or or your agency or whatever at the end um so that's the armchair workflow then we step it up to uh, what I call a deadline looming workflow. So, you know, they don't need the stuff immediately. This isn't, you know, the plane just crashed and I've got to get the pictures in. This is, you know, nighttime sports where, you know, I've got a little bit of wiggle time, but I'm still in a little bit of a hurry. I need to be fast. So start with, again, that basic IPTC data that gets put into the camera uh, while you're shooting you're going to review you're going to protect you're going to add voice memos as necessary um, and then one of the other things that a lot of people don't know that canon cameras can do is in camera cropping so sometimes you know you shoot something and you think it's a little loose and you know you don't really feel like you want to send the image in that way because you know some of us don't really trust the folks on the other end that end up cropping the stuff so the camera can do in camera cropping and you can apply a crop however you like sort of it goes by by different ratios it's not it's not a full scale you know however you want to crop it uh, but it does have a lot of flexibility and does allow you to sort of have control over how the crop goes and then you can save out a new jpeg with that crop applied uh, and then you can protect that that new cropped image so once you get to the point where you've got your your selects your protected images on the disc in the camera i would go to eos utility so at this point we're going to be skipping the photo mechanic ingest function but we're going to go to eos utility and connect the camera directly to the laptop using a usb cable um, now you don't have to use USB. EOS Utility will work with Ethernet or uh, Wi-Fi, but USB is the fastest way to get the images in. So when we connect by uh, USB to EOS Utility, when EOS Utility is installed in our computer, it automatically launches and we go to the, the download images. And when we get to the, the screen that allows us to download images, there is this select all protected images option in EOS utility. So this allows me to just go directly to the images on the disk that are protected or tagged and just copy them over. So, you know, even if you're shooting, you know, a sports game and you've got maybe, I don't know, 20 or 30 protected images through USB, those are going to copy over to your computer within a matter of seconds, 10, 15, 30 seconds tops. Um, so at that point, you've got them on your hard disk. You can open that folder 
in, in photo mechanic, you can add whatever specific caption data that you want to those images. Um, when you copy the protected images over, if there are voice tags, they copy over as well. Photo Mechanic will allow you to listen to those WAV files and get your data back that you spoke into the camera. You could also use Photo Mechanic to, to save out the image with a new crop on it. If you didn't want to crop in the camera, you can crop in Photo Mechanic as well. Uh, save out that new image in Photo Mechanic while also using variables and using uh, the, the sequence option will save out with a new name with an automatic sequence number. And at that point, you can deliver your images. So this workflow, once you get used to doing this, um, is actually really fast. You can go from, from connecting the camera via USB to sending the image within a couple of minutes. I mean, it, it, really, it really is very fast and very efficient. And this is one of the, the other cool functions of EOS utility is the fact that you can just get to those protected images on the disk and not copy everything over, but just copy those. Okay, so this is the, the breaking news, need it now, got to get there as quickly as possible. Um, you know, this is the, the, the riot going on, the plane crash, the whatever, um, they need the images immediately. So the front end workflow, the capturing, the tagging, all of that is the same. But now we're skipping over any other software. We're gonna be going from the camera directly to an FTP server. So in a case like this, you're gonna to need to be working with, with a, a news organization or an agency that has an FTP server that you're, you're able to connect to using the camera um, and you get those login credentials from them. So you're gonna use uh, either the built-in Wi-Fi in the camera or one of the add-on WFT transmitters if your camera doesn't have built-in Wi-Fi with FTP. And then you can use a uh, hotspot on your phone or a MiFi device as your connection to the internet. So you're gonna connect the camera through the phone or the MiFi directly to the FTP server. And as you shoot, you have a couple of options. In uh, the cam Canon cameras with FTP capability, there is a what's called transfer with set function. So when you have this transfer with set enabled, and I'll, I'll be able to show you how to do that once we get to the question phase. Um, as you're scrolling through, as you're looking at your images, when you see one that you want to send, you can just hit the set button on the back of the camera. And if you're connected to the FTP server, it will automatically send that image right then and there. There's also the image select and transfer option. So in that, op in that part of the, the FTP menu, you can scroll through and either select images individually. You can select a range of images. So I want, you know, starting at this and ending at this, I want all of these sent. Uh, but then there's also another really neat function with some of the Canon cameras like the 1DX2, 1DX3, uh, R5, where you can tell the camera to send the protected images only. And not just the protected images only, but the protected images that have been captured and protected since the last time I told the camera to send protected only. So I can shoot for a while, protect, send, a half a dozen or so go back to shooting three or four more protected i can send those the camera is going to remember what has been sent and what hasn't and when i protect those new images the camera will only send the newly protected ones so this again is is where that embedded iptc information becomes really important because we're not using a program like photo mechanic to add any specific or additional iptc data but the images are at least arriving on the server with your credit, with some caption information if you want it in there. Um, so at least they know who shot it. And at that point, you can contact the picture desk or whatever and provide any necessary detailed information for, for any of the images. I know some photographers will, will send some images and then email 
you know, a little bit of caption information based on on the file name of, of the image because that file name goes when the FTP goes and you can see that file name on the back of the camera. So you can, if you want, take notes based on the file name and then just transfer those over however you want to do it. But that caption data specifically would be sent after the images. So <clears throat> this is another case where it doesn't come up very often, but there are sometimes, especially for people that do a lot of sports, um, that can benefit from this type of workflow. And this is when you have a, a connected laptop close by. And when I say connected, I mean connected to the internet. So for example, you know, some ballparks, MLB ball, ballparks in, in the uh, first and third baselines have little tables where you can set up your laptop and be connected to the internet. So while you're shooting, your laptop is right there and you can connect right into your laptop and use this workflow. Or for example, like in this image I have here, um, if you're shooting tethered next to your laptop at the US Open, um, <clears throat> when you sit in the photo well there, there's actually a place for your laptop and ethernet ports, it's, it's very convenient. Um, I don't know if, if uh, Elsa Garrison from Getty or Johnny Mabanglo from EPA is on the call tonight, but if they are, uh, hello and uh, uh, thanks for letting me use your photo. So anyway, what you're gonna do is you're gonna connect your camera directly to the laptop by one of, of three different means. Uh, you can connect via ethernet as is shown in the photo here. You can connect via uh, Wi-Fi if your camera has a WFT or built-in Wi-Fi, or you connect via USB. Any one of these three will be the vehicle for transferring the images into the computer. So if you're connecting via any one of these three, EOS Utility will work. So EOS Utility will recognize the camera and allow me to do really anything that EOS Utility is capable of, including remote control and all of these other things uh, through Ethernet, Wi-Fi, or USB. So EOS Utility is sort of your, your universal connection, no matter how you're connecting to the laptop, that program will let you do what you need to do. If you're connecting via Wi-Fi or Ethernet, you can run an FTP server on your computer and then use that FTP server as a means for directly sending images from the camera as you shoot. So in all Canon cameras that have FTP capability, there is an automatic transfer function. So I talked about using the select and transfer, and I talked about using the transfer with set functions. Um, the automatic transfer sends everything automatically as you're shooting it. So that's the, that's the function that you're gonna enable if you're using FTP in this workflow. So the great thing is you've got your computer right there. And I used to do this when I, when I used to shoot the US Open in Flushing Meadows every year. You know, I had my laptop right there and I had the camera connected via ethernet. And as I was shooting, the stuff was going into the computer. But instead of using the regular ingest function in Photo Mechanic, I use the live ingest function. Now, if you're not familiar with live ingest, this is something I recommend you, you look into and start experimenting with a little bit. Live ingest is really cool because it will set up a hot folder on your computer that Photo Mechanic will constantly monitor. So when you set up your FTP server or you set up use utility, you set that folder that, that either one of those is dumping the images into as your hot folder. And so when Photo Mechanic sees an image come into that folder, it's gonna grab it. If you want, it will apply a batch caption. If you want, it will rename it. If you want, it will use variables. Photo Mechanic is incredibly, incredibly versatile when it comes to what you can do in this live ingest. But the great thing is that in a scenario like this, if you're shooting, you know, the Yankees versus the Red Sox, you can have that as already loaded in, in your batch caption. So as you're shooting, all of that basic metadata is getting put in, getting ingested as you're shooting, 
so that when play stops and you've got a minute, you can look down at your screen. All of your photos are already there. They're already captioned. All you've got to do is go in and hit the IPTC button, add whatever specific information about the play that you want, um, and then crop it, save it out however you want, and then deliver it that way. Um, but this is incredibly fast and incredibly convenient. The only downside of this um, is that if you are using the, uh, the automatic transfer in, uh, in FTP, um, the voice tagging option and the protect option are no longer available. So that's the only downside of this workflow. Um, but if you are getting to those images immediately, if there was just you know a double play or a home run or, or whatever, uh, if you're getting to those images right away, there's not as much of a need to remember, oh, what happened in the third inning? I have to go back to the voice tag to figure that out. It's going to be fresh in your mind. You can put that right in the caption right there. Um, so this is a really cool way if you've got a connected laptop right there uh, that you can go straight into. Live Ingest is, is, is the way to go. Live Ingest is also great for remote cameras. Um, if you're setting up a remote and running an FTP server on your computer or um, you're connecting via ES utility, um, you can run that live ingest. And as the remote is going, that stuff is getting copied in and getting captioned, um, which, is, which is another really cool thing. So brand new, this is a little bit of breaking news here. Uh, although we've made a development announcement on this, this has not really sort of hit the streets uh, quite yet. Um, with the development announcement of the EOS R3 a couple of weeks ago, Canon also announced our new mobile file transfer app. So everything I've been talking about with workflow and photo mechanic and all of that stuff is, is great for laptop-based uh, workflows. This mo new mobile file transfer app, which is going to be available for both iOS and Android when it's released, um, is going to take a lot of that functionality and put it directly into your phone. So you'll be able to connect to the phone either through Wi-Fi or USB. You'll be able to preload that caption data into the camera. So the same way we would do it by connecting to EOS utility through the laptop, I'll be able to preload that IPTC data right into the camera using the phone. That's a huge convenience. You can add and change IPTC data after the image is captured. So when you bring the images into the phone, you can then append or rebatch caption or add specific caption data using this app. Um, <clears throat> you can also add voice memos. You can add... Is this app backwards compatible with the DSLRs? So we have not announced yet publicly what cameras this app will be compatible with. Um, we've just made the development announcement and the items that I have listed on the screen here are the items I'm allowed to talk about. Um, so what cameras this app will be compatible with has not been announced yet. So I can't unfortunately uh, answer, answer that question. So stay tuned. Stay tuned, please. As it says at the bottom, available soon, compatibility details, see the Apple Store or Google Play Store. Um, but one of the other cool things that this will allow you to do is use uh, the voice assist in your phone to add caption data. So when I go into that caption field, I can hit the microphone button and I can speak into the phone and it will then type out what I'm speaking into that caption field. So talk about really quick caption editing uh, and transmitting. This app is going to be able to do that for you. So it will also take part of the place of what a WFT does. I can connect either, again, wirelessly or through USB, and I can have the app automatically send everything as I shoot. Or I can select and download and then caption. Um, so for a, for a workflow where you don't want to be carrying around a laptop and, and, you know, I'm sure there's quite a few people on the call tonight that, you know, covered a lot of the protests that went on 
over the last year. The last thing you want to be doing is having a backpack on your back with a laptop to be able to caption and send your photos. Well, this app is going to is going to be able to allow you to leave that laptop in the car for the most part for a lot of of what you're going to need to do in terms of captioning and sending photos. So uh, stay tuned for details on this app. Uh, but it's very cool. It's very exciting. I am very excited about this app. Um, it was a beta version was actually used at the Super Bowl just past this past February um, and worked very well and got very, very, very high marks. Um, so yeah, coming, coming soon. All right. Um, if any of you were part of my, my wired wireless networking FTP presentation a couple of months ago, this is a, this is a slide that I pulled from there. Uh, just as a point of reference, because we're talking about connectivity, we're talking about transmitting. Um, if you want to screenshot this, please, I'll leave it up for a second. Feel free to screenshot it. Uh, these are sort of the cameras over the last couple of generations, uh, what capability they have in terms of connection, Ethernet, Wi-Fi, so forth, um, and, and whether they have that capability. So feel free to screenshot this. Also with the next slide, also from that same presentation as last time, um, if you want to know whether your camera can be connected to Wi-Fi, can have FTP capability, whatever. Um, this is a chart that shows what WFT units we have, as well as the, the WE1 SD adapter that works in the 7D Mark II, 5DS, 5DSR. Um, so if you want to do a screenshot of this, these are the devices that will connect to these specific cameras and give them connectivity options, uh, whether it's just Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi with ethernet. Uh, it's going to depend on, on the camera and the device. If you need me to go back to this uh, at some point, please just say I will, I will go back to it. So um, this is part of this is also from that, that presentation before, but this is, this is apps and programs that I recommend having on your computer or at least trying at one point or another. So the top row are, are the Canon apps. We haven't really talked yet about Canon Camera Connect. This is our basic uh, smartphone connectivity app for uh, iOS and Android. If your camera has smartphone capability and really any camera, any current generation camera has built-in Wi-Fi with it, um, many of the previous generations have it uh, going back to like the 7D Mark II uh, with the WE1. These will connect to the Camera Connect app. The Camera Connect app will allow you to browse the disk on the camera, select your images, load them into your uh, camera roll, and then from there, um, use other uh, apps or functions to, to get them to where they need to be. EOS Utility, we talked a lot about that. Mac and PC, something you should have installed on your computer just in case all the time. There's also the image.canon cloud service app. This is something that launched uh, not quite two years ago, uh, but if your camera has the capability to connect to uh, cloud services, and again, going back to, I think the 6D, most cameras with built-in Wi-Fi will have that. Image.canon is nice because if, if the organization you're working with doesn't have an FTP server or you don't have a way to, to sort of upload images to a place where someone else outside of the area where you are can get to them, image.canon is cool because you can have the camera automatically upload to image.canon. It has hooks that go into Google Photos and go into Adobe. So for example, stuff will get automatically added to your Lightroom catalogs, things like that. Uh, that's kind of a cool service. Uh, there's Digital Photo Professional. This is Canon's uh, own proprietary raw, development, uh, raw, raw developing software. Um, there's been some talk on the internet as of late about Adobe and some of the color issues that are coming up with some of our cameras with the way Adobe is interpreting the color. Um, Digital Photo Professional will give you that Canon color science that is so famous that everybody loves out of your RAW files. So if you're not getting the color out of your RAW files, 
that you want from whatever program you're using, DPP is, is the way to go because it's going to give you that, that great Canon color. Um, there's also DPP Express for iPad. So this is a, a, a almost a full version. I'd say about 95% version of DPP that runs on your iPad. Uh, it's compatible with any camera that has a CR3 RAW format. So if you have one of our older cameras, like uh, you know the, the 5D Mark IV or 5D Mark III that had a CR2 RAW file, uh, DPP Express won't work with those. So just know that. But if you need a raw mobile workflow with the compatible Canon camera, DPP Express is really cool. Uh, I talked about FTP and running an FTP server on your computer. So if you, if you have a Mac um, up to High Sierra, the Mac OS would allow you to run a simple regular FTP server using just a terminal command. At High Sierra and later, because of some security issues with regular FTP, you can't run regular FTP on a Mac anymore without an app. So this FTP server app is the one that I recommend. I'm running it on my computer right now. Uh, it seems rock solid. It's really great. If you need regular FTP, I'm not talking about secure FTP like SFTP or FTPS, regular FTP on your Mac, FTP server is the one to go with. If you have a PC, uh, FileZilla server is, uh, it's free, it's universal, it's ubiquitous, it's really good. Um, so if you need to run an FTP server on your PC, FileZilla server is the one I recommend. There's also these, yes, go ahead. Uh, is there any news on an update on the color profiles for the new mirrorless at all? Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that was when you were talking about before. These when I was talking about the raw software, yeah. So th th this is one of the things that's sort of coming out now is, is some, some raw conversion softwares are not producing the, the, the Canon colors that, that our cameras are famous for. So unfortunately, when it comes to any third party, whether it's a piece of software, whether it's a piece of hardware, um, you're kind of on your own with dealing with that company on getting answers and getting fixes to whatever the issue is. Um, we don't get involved in what other third party software developers do in terms of processing our, our raw files. So, you know, if you're using, for example, Adobe Camera Raw and there aren't any camera specific profiles for the camera you're using, like the R5 or the R6, um, that's on Adobe to update and create those profiles and have them match our colors. Uh, we have no control over that. Uh, again, if, you, if, you, if you've got to have that Canon color, um, Digital Photo Professional is, is the way to go. And so um, the software is a little clunky, admittedly. It's not as fast. Um, but if you only process out sort of your keepers, uh, it doesn't take that long and the end results are, are well, well worth it. Uh, so getting back to the apps, and this is going to be the last slide and we'll get to the other, the rest of your questions, but um, talking about FTP, uh, if, you, if you're doing a mobile workflow, if you want to be able to have a way to quickly get images onto your tablet or your phone, um, this FTP manager or FE file explorer for iOS, either one of these programs uh, are kind of unique in that they're not only an FTP client where you can sign into an FTP server and upload and download. These two programs are unique in that they allow you to run an FTP server on your phone or on your iPad. And that can be really convenient and really fast especially when you think about using that transfer with set function that's in our cameras. If you're running an FTP server on your phone, you can have multiple cameras connected to it via FTP at once. And when you get to that image that you want to send, you can just hit that set button and it will just copy that image onto your phone and it'll be there to, to, to send to, to, uh, to wherever it needs to go. Uh, another one is Shutter Snitch. This program has been around for a long time. 
Uh, it's really popular with journalists. This is another program that also will run an FTP server on your phone or your iPad. Um, it does it differently than the other two and is, is very much geared toward an, an imaging workflow. Shutter Snitch is specific for photography and photographers, where the other two are just FTP programs that, that aren't geared specifically towards, towards photography. So, you know, you're dealing with a file system as opposed to a graphical system like Shutter Snitch. So uh, Shutter Snitch is another one that's really cool. FilterStorm is another program that's been around for a while for iOS. The cool thing about FilterStorm is that you can use something like Shutter Snitch or FTP Manager to get your images into the phone, but FilterStorm will allow you to grab those images, apply a batch caption, or apply specific caption information and uh, FTP straight out of the program. So uh, right now, until our new mobile file transfer app is available, uh, FilterStorm is about as close as it gets to sort of a photo mechanic on your phone kind of workflow. Uh, so for now, um, until the Canon app's available, uh, take a look at FilterStorm. Uh, the last one is Cast Cable. I throw this in there because um, it's kind of a unique program because it allows you to connect your camera to your phone in EOS utility mode. So the Canon Camera Connect app only allows connection through smartphone mode. Uh, Cast Cable allows you to connect through EOS utility mode. So for cameras, for example, like the 1DX, the original 1DX uh, with the WFT transmitter that don't have that smartphone capability, that ability to connect to Canon Camera Connect, uh, Cast Cable will connect to that camera in EOS utility mode and allow you to, to access the images on the disk um, straight from the phone. So that's it. I'm going to leave this slide up for a couple of seconds. If you guys want to jot down my contact info, there it is, my email. Please feel free at any time. Uh, I'm here to help. So with that, I will open up the, the questions. So uh, Stingray, let me have it. All righty. Nothing yet, but I'll let you know. <laughs> oh, well, OK. Um, that's either really good or really bad. <laughs> either I covered everything or or you guys are asleep. So um, hopefully not the latter, but uh, yeah. So um, again, with, with, with all of the stuff that I've showed you tonight, it's, it's one way of doing it. It's, it's a way that, that working with photographers in the field and, and having worked as a photojournalist for years, um, these are some ways that you can get these things done. Um, you know, you may find that for your workflow, for however you're doing it, you know, some step in the middle that I put in there, you might want to replace with something else, another piece of software or, or whatever, you know, you're, you're going to use what, what works for you, but at the very least, you know, hopefully I've given you sort of a, a, um, a model to go by with each of these scenarios so that depending upon the kind of pressure you're under for, for lack of a better way to put it, um, you can have a basic workflow that will allow you to get the, ca the, the, the pictures out of the camera and onto the server. Oh, we have Kathleen Dreyer saying, thank you. You're welcome, Kathleen, thank you. And uh, is there any slide you'd like Tony to go back to possibly or re-explain or maybe you didn't catch catch something that you were um, back on. Well, I can sort of scroll back through. If, if I'll, I'll leave these two up again for a second. If you didn't get a chance to screenshot these and you want to still do that, uh, I'll leave this up for just a couple of seconds. You can screenshot this one um, at the bottom of this. Make sure you get the text at the bottom. If you've got one of our really older legacy camera, 5D Mark II, uh, 1D Mark III, um, even 1D Mark II. Um, there are transmitters available for those cameras. They're not available new anymore, uh, but they are available on the used market. Um, so these are the transmitters. For example, if you're still using a 20D, you know, you can get the WFT E1 um, and that will give that camera FTP capability. I have a question from yes. 
Matt Schuffler, he's asking, he's a new, he's a new art six user. Um, and he's asking, unless he missed it, uh, will the buttons ever light up for night shooting? <laughs> um, thanks for the question, Matt. Um, the R6 does not have illuminated buttons. Uh, right now, the 1DX Mark III is the only camera in the lineup that has illuminated buttons. So that's that's something that you know really can't be added after the fact. Um, you know those those LEDs behind them and the translucent buttons all have to be put in when the camera's made. Um, so that is a feature that that the engineers are aware that uh, that people want. Uh, but right now, the 1DX Mark III is is the only camera with illuminated buttons. So unfortunately, the R6 uh, does not do that. I'm going to back up to the last slide here, if anyone wants to screenshot that, to have uh, that info on uh, what cameras do what in terms of connectivity. And uh, I'm just going to scroll through again to see if I missed anything. Um, again, the MFT app is really exciting. Um, it's, it's really going to revolutionize uh, photojournalism in terms of transmitting for Canon shooters. Um, folks have been, have been needing this for a little while, um, and it's, it's almost ready to go. So with that one, could you just leave? Yeah. Like, you know, have a cable connect to the camera, leave, your, leave the phone in your pocket, and if, if you want, maybe you have a, a photo desk that does all the editing and captioning for you and just have it automatically sending stuff. If they like something, they pull it. Correct. Okay. Yep. So that could also work then in sports for a, a remote camera possibly too, right? If yeah, absolutely. I mean, if, 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 I mean, if you're close enough in Wi-Fi range um, or if you want to leave the phone, if you have an extra phone, you know, that you can leave with the remote camera, um, that's certainly going to be doable. Um, again, the, 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 the features of the app that I can talk about right now are only the ones listed here. Okay. Um, I, I've had a beta version of this app for a while. Um, there are other things you're gonna be able to do with this app that are not listed that I can't talk about right now. Um, but if you get creative, there's some cool stuff. Estimate I'm sorry. When, estimate of when it will hit the market or can't talk about it. Is, you know, ask me when the R3 is coming out. I can't tell you. Um, we have made the development announcement. Uh, and this is this is the information I can talk about. And that's it. Unfortunately, I can't I can't add to 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 what was just said in the development about announcement about this or or about the R3. Um, so, yeah. Um, Keely's asking, could you go over the IPTC uh, metadata, adding it to the uh, images uh, automatically during or after capture? Okay, so um, actually what I can do is, let me do this. How much time have we got? We got half an hour, okay. Um, I'm gonna switch to my other camera here. Bear with me for a second and let me make sure everything is working here. So on my computer here, I've got a uh, FTP server running and I have uh, a 1DX Mark III here connected um, to my, to my uh, switch via ethernet and is connected to the FTP server. So I'm going to switch to the back of the camera here. Everybody see that? So we talked about uh, image transfer. Um, I've just got some, I've got some US Open photos that I've shot on here. Um, but real quick, so if you've got FTP capability in, in your camera, you're going to have this image transfer menu option. And I'm going to just go through this really quickly. Uh, if I go into image select and transfer, and then FTP transfer, so direct transfer, before I get to FTP, direct transfer, um, make a note of this. Direct transfer is for EOS utility. If I'm connected to the computer and EOS utility via Ethernet or Wi-Fi or, or, or however I'm connected, direct transfer is for EOS utility. It doesn't specify that, but that's really important to know. 
Um, FTP is obviously specifically for FTP. So I'm going to go into here. And so I have a few options here. I can go in and I can select images and I can just go through. And if I want to transfer one, I can just put a checkbox in there. I can select a range. So, you know, starting with one image, ending with another, I can select those for transfer. I can select an entire folder if I want to do that. If I'm the kind of person that makes different folders on the cards and separates those out, I can send an entire folder. And then when I go into all images, there's a couple of options. And this is the one that I was talking about earlier. So as we're shooting and as we're protecting, tagging, whatever you want to call it, this is the function if your camera has it, not all of them do. do. Uh, 1DX2, 1DX3, and R5 have this option right now with FTP. Select images, not transferred, protected only. And so this is that option where it's going to grab the images that have not been sent via FTP already, but are protected. So that option is the one you want if you're shooting, sending, shooting, sending, shooting, sending, and then only wanting to send those protected images. But getting to Achilles' question about um, IPTC. So um, I'm going to select images not transferred. And so um, in this screen, it's showing me that there's 318 images that are on this disk. So it's going to transfer all 318 of them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to go to photo mechanic. Can you guys see my photo mechanic screen here? Yes, we can. So I'm going to go, I talked about live ingest. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to say live ingest. And so in this field, I've set up this FTP folder as the, the hot folder, the one that is going to be looking for images to come in. I talked about variables. I won't get into this in detail. This is incredibly powerful function that photo mechanic has all of these different things that I'm scrolling through, these specific items in terms of metadata, these variables will look for and be able to apply specifically based on the metadata of the camera. So this is incredibly powerful and very, very cool. But you can have these variables in place. You can apply IPTC stationary pads. So Keely, this is getting to your question. So if, um, if I have the IPTC stationary pad set up here, my basic caption. Um, I don't know why there's an X4 in there. I'll get rid of that. So if I have um, this apply IPTC stationary pad to photos selected, that basic batch caption information is going to go on everything that gets live ingested. So I'm going to hit start. So now it says waiting for files to ingest. I'm going to close this. So on the camera now, I'm going to say transfer start transfer and okay. And so because I'm connected via ethernet, this is gonna go like mad, but you can see now that as these images are going into the FTP server, Photo Mechanic is finding them in that hot folder. It's picking them up and then putting them in this live ingest folder. And if I go into the IPTC info, boom, there it is. There's my batch caption that Photo Mechanic is applying to every single image as it's coming in. So really cool, really powerful. Um, you know, my batch caption would have the basic, you know, what event I'm at, where it is, you know, the basic stuff. And then I could go in here, select any one of these images, put my specific caption information in, and then hit OK. It's going to save that specific data with that image. And then I can send using the FTP function in Photo Mechanic to pass that final image along. So yeah, very cool. So you can see if I go back to uh, uh, stop the share, you can see that um, it's sending pretty quick. So these are these are you know 1DX2 JPEG files. Um, and the cool thing about the, the 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 latest firmware update with FTP is that it shows me um, how much time I have left for my transfer. So that that was a new. Thing that was added with the latest firmware update for the R5 
1DX3, 5D Mark IV, I believe. Several different cameras got a firmware update that now adds this uh, images and, and time remaining, uh, which is really helpful, especially with Wi-Fi and cellular. Sometimes you kind of need to know um, how long before everything is done. So yeah, very cool. So I'm just going to hit cancel and stop it because we're, we're kind of done. But you can see now, as I've canceled, it tells me that um, 149 transferred and 169 failed. They didn't really fail. I stopped the transfer, but those were 169 images that were tagged to be sent, but did not send. So you'll also notice the little X and zero uh, next to those, next to those uh, text lines. So if I go into my playback mode here, anything that has the zero showing here next to that set, that, that image successfully transferred. So if I have the transfer with set enabled in this camera, if I come across an image, I'll sort of go the other way and I'll probably hit one that doesn't have an X, that doesn't have a zero. Bear with me here. There it is. Okay, so that X tells me that this image was, was slated for transfer, but did not transfer. So with the transfer with set function, I can hit the set button on the back of the camera and then boom, that, ca that image just went. So if you have the info displayed on the back of the camera using the info button, you can have that information as to whether the image was slated for transfer and whether that transfer went through successfully. And in this case, with the info displayed this way, I have two indicators. I have the circle next to the set here. And then I also have this little icon here that shows me that this image successfully transferred. So as I go through and I see, oh, wait a minute, you know, you know, that's a nice shot of Serena. It didn't go. I want to send that one. I can hit the set button and boom, it's going to send that one and then show that it's successfully transferred. Now, if I go back to sharing my screen and I go back to photo mechanic here, these are the images that transferred that photo mechanic picked up in the live ingest and as i mentioned i can go to any one of these i can blow it up i can hit the z key and see if it's in sharp focus if his eyes are open whatever um and then i can also in photo mechanic hit the i button and then there's my caption information so this is a notice at the top here it says iptc info 4 this specific image. So the general IPTC info box in photo mechanic, if I hit command I or control I, this says IPTC stationary pad. So because I haven't changed any of the specific caption info for any of these photos yet, the text and everything I'm seeing for the IPT stationary pad is going to look the same as the batch caption for the individual photo. But remember that at the top here, this is telling me specifically for this image. And at this point, I can type in, you know, whatever I want, my, my additional who, what, where, why specifics about, you know, this image and hit OK. And then, you know, the, the uh, uh, command Y is copy for, for photo mechanic. Command U is FTP transfer. So if you have the uh, FTP server for, the the company you're working for set in here photo mechanic will automatically ftp the image when you hit command u or control u uh, you can also have it save out uh, as a, a, a more compressed jpeg you can rename it again using these variables there's a lot of options here so um you know while this isn't a specifically a photo mechanic tutorial um in terms of photojournalism, this is one of the most powerful programs you can be using for quick editing, selecting, captioning, and, and transferring images. So yeah, any questions? How am I doing? Yeah, Schiffler says, thank you. It's been incredibly helpful. OK, great. All right, well, I like. Wanted to ask about that whole process. All makes sense. 
That was very helpful, Tony. <laughs> There's a lot, a lot of stuff in there I didn't know about. So it was like all the little details. I, thank you. My pleasure. And so, uh, you know, a reminder to everyone that, that um, despite me going quickly and, and, and sort of rifling through a lot of this stuff, this is being recorded. So as an NPPA member, you can go back and, uh, you know, if you have nothing else to do, um, listen to me drone on and on again about how to, uh, how to do workflow. Um, so yeah, those recordings are available. And there also are also some on camera. So if you're looking at, uh, you just bought a camera and you're curious as to what's going on in the menu system, go back into that, into those archives and uh, look see if that camera's up there it's great, great yep. thank you stingray and yeah on that um um i put my contact info up does anybody else still need that i can i can drop that back on if anybody still needs my email address but um a general invitation you know not just about what i speak about here during these master your craft presentations um i'm a canon pro rep if you are a canon user and you have a question about anything in terms of our products, um, please feel free to, to reach out to me via email. I'm here to help um, and I will jump in and, and, and do what I can. Um, you know, I do a lot of, I do a lot of fairly long phone calls with folks on setting up FTP or, you know, how do I make the AF system in the new R5 work the way I want it to. Uh, I've been doing a lot of those phone calls because you know, the mirrorless is very different than, than what you may have been using over the years with the SLR. So uh, it's what I'm here for. I'm happy to do it. Um, you know, please feel free to email me. Are those, uh, so we got a question from Zach Goodwin. Are those Canon film cameras behind you in the background? <laughs> Let me reset the focus here. Yes, that is my part of my Canon collection. There's some digital, but yeah, film cameras. Um, Going back to rangefinder, there's an old Pelix back there with a pellicle mirror. There's an old Olympic F1. Um, there's some really much older DSLRs, uh, uh, DSLRs, SLRs back there. Um, A series cameras. Um, these are my old Star Ledger cameras up here, along with some uh, <laughs> some um, magnesium shells. I have a little curious piece. Got this after I started working at Canon. So this is a uh, 1DX Mark III, or 1D Mark III, excuse me. So, uh, you know, just some little curious pieces uh, back there as part of my collection. But yeah, thank you for uh, asking about that. Uh, um, haven't been doing a lot of collecting lately, but uh, over the years I've, I've managed to, to, to grab some stuff. It's a pretty cool collection, Tony. Thank you, Akili. Yeah, they're fun. Yeah. And it makes a great background. Yeah, it does. <laughs> if nothing else. <laughs> you know, I've been spending a lot of time on Zoom and Teams and, um, you know, it helps. <laughs> I love the lighting of it, too. You have some like little, little black, uh, some blue lights back there. To yeah, well, yeah. You might as well go for it, right? right. <laughs> well, again, this has been incredibly helpful as a, a lot of the uh, audience has mentioned in the q a there in chat so i thank you so much tony and uh, look forward to your next presentation with us uh, next month let's see we have uh we're gonna be doing uh are you still using your computer camera for your video calls the canon eos webcam utility helps you look at the look like the pros you are and we're also doing uh, choosing Canon lenses for video. What are the differences between lineups and what do we need? That'll be, um, actually, I, I got that wrong. It's July 14th and 15th. So, oh, no, I'm sorry. Canon Cinema EOS lineup for documentary work. That's July 14th. And then are you still using your computer camera for video calls? Uh, Canon EOS webcam utility. And that's July right. 15th. Okay. Thank you, Akili. So, yeah. So uh, a plug for webcam utility before, uh, before we wrap it up here. Um, I'm not going to be doing that. Uh, my colleague, Hanaro Arroyo from Los Angeles is going to be doing that. Um, he's a great person. He is the webcam utility expert. Um, but just so you all know, that is what I'm using right now. 
My webcam is an EOS M50 uh, APS-C mirrorless camera, which is why I can sort of touch and refocus and do the eye tracking and all of that stuff and, and why I'm coming through uh, nice and clear, hopefully. So yeah, webcam utility, very, very cool. Any EOS camera becomes your webcam. Oh, very cool. That's something I'd like to explore myself. So yep. get off this uh, computer camera. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> right, yep. so any other questions for anybody else? We're gonna, otherwise we'll call it a night. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Akili. Thank you, Stingray. Thank you, the NPPA. Um, believe it or not, I actually enjoy doing this. Um, and I look forward to hearing from some of you um, with, with your questions down the road, if you have any. So uh, thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you, Canon. And uh, I also uh, put a plug in for Canon uh, Professional Services. If you're not a member of that, uh, NPPA members also get a discount off of that, too. So. Thank you again.